How's it going everyone? Kim Black to be fair. So I don't always play Gwent, but when I'm not playing Gwent, I'm thinking it's a perfect time to play some more Gwent. So apparently I just got home from my work, I now have a week off, and I saw this uh, quick hotfix for Gwent, and there's a lot of new details in there. So I haven't even read them, but I've read, I can see this picture, so I know one thing at least. Um, but I'm just going to go through them, and I'm going to talk about what I think this will mean in general as we go through based on what the current meta is and how certain decks will will work and work around this kind of changes okay so thanks for joining me today so this particular hotfix could change the way the current meta is played quite drastically I, I don't know what they are yet but it's mainly focused around major balance issues so we're going to see a lot of stuff on Nilfgaard being improved because they were the least played faction that might be somewhere because you know people were new and didn't have the cards but their, their revealing aspect, the uh, reconnaissance archetypes, just getting a bit more focus and some of their golds have been increased in strength. You know, and there's a lot of other changes and we can see the Axemen here, so we're going to see some major balance changes. So there are a couple of Gwent changes which I'm really hoping. One begins with Y and rhymes with Fenifer, but uh, we'll see about that in a minute. So next we've got some general and neutral changes. Commander's Horn now only adds plus four to a row. So this is significantly less, it's kind of like a silver version of Thunderbolt Potion. And you have to start wondering just how important this is going to be. I mean, if I'm playing the buff, buff, buffs archetype, I'm wondering whether it's better for me to just take another Thunderbolt Potion, because I'll have loads of poor infantry, rather than taking a Commander's Horn, which would get a couple of other stragglers, but it's not that big of a deal. However, it would do a row, so it could protect you against things like Geralt Igni, because if I just did a Thunderbolt, and I didn't Thunderbolt something which is a little higher as well, then they would become igniable, so maybe. So Triss Merigold can now target both sides of the board. Now Triss is the 8 strength neutral card, gold, that does 4 strength wounded to a, a non-gold unit on the opposing side of the board, but now she can target both sides. So it's unlikely sometimes that you want to use this, but, you know, the rock tossers are a big thing. Now it would be a bit of a waste, but sometimes you've got to, you've got to use it to save a lot more. And, you know, there, there are instances where you want to hurt your own units for some reason or another. But, uh, I mentioned this in a lot of my streams, but I don't know if that's translated over to YouTube. I may have clipped some of it. But CD Projekt Red are starting to get a lot more flexible with wounding options. A lot of the cards in the game at the minute can only target the opponent's side of the board. Your Veth, Vernon Roach, Triss Merigold used to be able to do it. Stuff like that. But uh, there, are only, there are a couple that can target both sides. Things like the Clan Brockvar Archer for Skellige is about 5 strength, just 1 strength wounding 3 times on 3 different targets. Well, they're going to start rolling this out quite a lot so you can target things on either side of the board. This means things like the Rock Tossers are going to get inherently worse because people are going to have options, a lot more options, uh, to target this in the future. Triss Merigold might only be the first of many to come down this list, so just think about this. You know, Rock Tossers might fall out of favour. Things like Villain Tretton Mirth might be easier to play around because you could wound your own units better and stuff like that. Weird awkward change. So I apologise I had to record this afterwards if there's any change in lighting and stuff. I didn't realise there was a secret hidden nerf that wasn't there on the main page until I went further in and then it is there and everyone was talking about it and it is a huge change, like massive. So I have to go back and <laughs> talk about this one. Merigold's Hailstorm. And Skellige Storm now let you choose one weather effect out of the two. And I'm guessing White Frost is probably in there as well, otherwise that's a bit unfair. Um, but basically, dual weather cards have become knockoff aeromancies. You know, they only do one row out of the two that you get to choose. So in which case, aeromancy is just clearly better now, because you get a, choose, a choice of all three rows. Uh, but obviously, if you want multiple choice cards, then Aeromancy is your first one, and then you have to choose between Merigold's Hailstorm and Skellige Storm for more choice. Um, but they're just not anywhere near as good now, these cards. It's hugely... It's a huge nerf, I would say. Um, it just means that Clear Skies can now keep up with these dual weather cards, because they're not dual anymore, it's just dual choice. But it also means Aeromancy is way better now, unless they choose to change that in the future. But also Ragnarug is still, I assume, three the whole board. So Ragnarok is now the the prince, the king of oppressive weather. 
the gold card is now what you want if you want real oppressive re weather. Otherwise, Marigold's Hailstorm, Skellige Storm, White Frost is all just about consistent, relentless pressure of weather. It's no longer going to be, you place two weathers down and you can't get rid of both, so I'm going to lacerate one row. Um, that is a huge change, the Monster Weather decks. Um, we'll have to see. Now, a lot of people were complaining about weather, but uh, I never had too much issue with it, unless I did. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of things that you could do to get around weather. I mean, you've got the Clan Turok Armorsmith. You've got um, weather immunity. Blizzard. I think it was more Blizzard potions that needed like help. You know, Blizzard potions should do what Quen did, or all instances of it from your deck, so that if you did something on the board that needed it now. You wouldn't feel like you got a raw end of the deal because other things in your deck could get it. But maybe that might be too strong, I don't know. But this is going to hurt. It's going to hurt dual weather cards. Monsters. Ancient Foglets strengths change from 6 to 5. I like that. They're really good value. Ancient Foglets are good value cards. Um, 5 strength is still difficult to remove. 6 and 5 are kind of the same wounding. It's probably going to be an Alzor's Thunder. The only thing that I can think of is Vernon Roach. But it just means they, they're one point less. To be honest, it's a little change. It's helpful. I think it's okay. Because they, they, they can easily be worth 10 strength if you don't get rid of them quickly. Avalak strength changed from 6 to 8. Still probably one of the better spies in the game. Okay, so gold strength spy that you draw two cards, the opponent draws one. Still very good considering Burner Brand has gone up to 12 and everyone else has gone up to at least 12, maybe 14 in Yaven's case. So still the best spy in the game, I would say. Maybe around Cantarella, who could has the potential to come back to your side or whatever. The Crones have been changed to 787. I mentioned this yesterday's stream that CD Projekt Red wanted the Crones to get tweaked a little bit. They are a bit strong. And they wanted them specifically to get the Epidemic treatment. So the witches are 667, and they can be epidemic, and you remove two sixes, which is great. And the same with the crones, 778. They are better, they are faction specific, they're on the range row, which is great. They don't have the same uh, flexibility of potions like witches do, so that might be where they get the extra strength increase. But they can be epidemic, especially if they're the first thing played, and that's really, really quite good. Now, note that Pavetta can't deal with these, because if you Epidemic them, they could still pass, and you've got to deal with an 8 strength unit. Um, not too difficult to do, you can place it in one card, maybe, and beat that. But you can't place one card still, and beat them at the same time. Great. Waterhag would, but Pavetta wouldn't. Succubus strength changed from 10 to 8, a buff for the Succubus. The Succubus is actually pretty a good card, and it's even got even better now, which is really nice to see. The <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Fran Warrior's strength changed from 5 to 6. Is that necessary? There might be something here to do with, I don't know, King of Beggars. Because I know the Ekimara is 6. And the Fran Warrior is, at the minute, starting to look very much like the Ekimara. Um, oh, there is another change. I just spotted it. I spy. Fran Warrior will not consume a unit right after being played. That makes total sense now. But they've got to wait two turns for that to work. They've lost the Ekimara ability to place a card, consume something, and guarantee that the Vran Warrior is the last thing that's kept. Six Strength is a target like the Ancient Foglet that's very important to get rid of. So, like a, a quite a big nerf there. They get one Strength increase to try and survive. But like I mentioned, five and six Strength is kind of the same wounding. It's going to be an Alzor's Thunder, not much like other than that. It just gets outside of Vernon Roach's range and goes into Yorveth range, but yeah. Succubus will now place Agile units on the opposite row upon moving them. Yeah, I've heard someone played a Succubus, and if you steal an Agile unit, it goes to any random row, which could hurt you, especially if you know there's a weather on a particular row, and you don't want it to go into that. So, a great, great addition there. I'm surprised about the Succubus change. The Vran change I like means Ekimaras have got their ability back, really. You can't just take Ekimaras and Vran Warriors and use them in the same way now, which is consume the highest strength unit and guarantee that unit to be kept. Um the next round, which is basically what the Ekimara should be doing solely. Skelliger, oh my god, King Bran? King Bran, what, 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 I can't, I can't wait. Now discards up to three cards and has plus one base strength. Right. Wow. Okay, so, you know, I liked his consistency. More discarding options. The Warlong ships may come about, 
just having a little scan, there's a lot of, there's a change to Ermion, there's a change to Svanriga. So maybe we're starting to see some discarding options here. So, I mean, I don't know if it's actually good to discard three Queen's Guard. You know, they still only get plus one base. But uh, it gives you a lot more options, which is which is good. I like that. It means you do more damage with the War Long ships, more more buffs for the uh, Clandermon Pirate Captain. Yeah, it could be good. We'll have to really test that. I don't want to say that everything's a good change, but uh, you know, I want to be kind of try and stay neutral. But I like how they're trying to improve him without actually giving him plus two base strength because they thought it was too difficult. Samriga now draws a card first, then discards them. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you very much. Maybe he'll see a lot more play, because he used to see a lot of play with Decoy. Uh, I'm going to go straight down to the bottom, because I think this will all tie together. Ermion will now draw two cards and discard two cards. So they've reverted it back. Um, a lot of people are going to be happy about that. He was an auto-include. Now, Skellica's golds are a bit lackluster. They don't seem to fit too many purposes. A lot of the time, you start taking a lot of neutrals and stuff for Skellige. So Ermion will probably come in a lot um, if you're going for a discarding option. I just hope I just hope the discarding kind of thing works. I don't see a change for the Wild Boar of the Sea. You can't lose to playing Wild Boar of the Sea if you don't put it in your deck. That's how it works. Drake Bond Drake Bond Durr? <laughs> That's not right. Drake Bond Durr. Strength changed to four. What was he? Was he five? Drake Bond Durr. He's no longer relentless, so you can decoy him. Which is, is interesting, but we've got more. Drake Bondur ability change to add three base strength to two non-gold units in your graveyard. Okay, so it doesn't do everything, only does two things. Now, the repercussions of this is that you'll focus on probably two things repeatedly. Um, or maybe you'll switch it around three Queen's Guard. So the the value from Queen's Guard is going to be split a bit from Drake Bondur. But you can use it multiple times now. Um, he seems to still be fleeting. Was he fleeting? Hmm, I can't remember. I think he was fleeting. Relentless and fleeting and everything. So, you know, they pretty much stopped him completely. But uh, he adds three base strength, which is still nice value to two. Which means if people are playing like Vicar Raro Medics and Caretaker, they are going to target the ones that you're targeting. So it's probably, a, it's going to be back into the Skellige resurrecting archetype. And it is going to make it risky against monsters and maybe Nilfgaard. But Nilfgaard don't see too many Vico Vara medics. I don't see, really. Um, so, Plantor Rock, Armorsmith, change, strength change from 6 to 5. I really, I, I get a bit wincy about how many 5 strength minions are on Skelliger. But uh, I think the Armorsmith was always good value. Um, you know, he was even good to pull out in round 2 and 3. He was always good value. And so he probably still will stick to that value. And besides, if there's a lot of 5 strength minions and you play him, he will buff one of them to 7, so you don't have to worry about a massive Scorch all over the board. The Axeman gets plus 1 strength for every damage unit on the opponent's side of the board. Only on the opponent's side of the board. I read that wrong, I'm going to have to go and edit the first part of my video. <laughs> Only on the opponent's side of the board. Damn. That's going to create... Damn. <laughs> opponent side of the board. So that's the complete opposite of what it used to be. It's still only one strength. They would probably damage someone. But that means our the Clipple is going to be an amazing card for the Axeman. He always was, but now he's still going to be. Yennefer, Savage Bear. It means that you won't be able to do Axeman, Savage Bear, and the Shield Maidens. They won't combo because you'll be hurting yourself. Yennefer Kundra is still going to be massively good for um, Skelliger. Still a very good card. So, I think it could still be good. Still very good. My heart, my voice goes really high when I get excited. I think I think the Axeman could still be quite viable. Just not absurdly viable. 50 strength for one card. A bronze card was ridiculous. But I think you could still get a very nice, decent amount of strength here. You know? Hmm, maybe. It means when people try and attack you, and that's attacking anything on your side of the board, it's not going to buff you. So it's probably a little easier to get rid of the Axeman now. Um, or at least reduce strength all over the board without buffing the Axeman massively. Alright, nice changes for Skelliger there, I think. Northern Rounds, only a couple here. Okay, Dwani's Seed Support can now only be placed on the Siege Row. Okay. 
Reinforcements will now be able to title all bronze, even if there are no copies left in the deck. Ah, so... That sounds strange to me. Why... Why would you be able to do that? If there's no copies left in the deck, why would you want to target it? Now, I know there was some bug recently with reinforcements, so maybe that's a quick fix. But uh, it also means that you're going to have to remember what cards you've played, which is very difficult sometimes when you've got like poor infantry and there's like three copies and then three copies and then you medic one out and it creates another three copies and stuff. And it might just cause a bit more of a reliance onto the Gwent uh, deck tracker for that particular thing. Um... I, I, I think that's a bit weird, but um, I, it might be regarding the bug. Goyotel only got one. Added a one turn timer to Dennis Kramer. Will now reset all of the non gold units on the row at the end of the round. So, one turn timer? Is that not just every turn? Maybe it's just a visual thing because something's going on, but he didn't have a timer on him, so now he should have a timer on him. For, for usability concerns. Nilfgaard got a lot of buffs here, uh, apparently according to above. Imperial Brigade is now boosted only by spying units on the opponent's side of the board. Alright, so that's a nerf. <laughs> there you go, there's their first buff, that's a nerf. Treason now adds plus 8 to an opposing spying unit. So there are much more reasons to take Treason over just John Calfeet, which is great. The Manganel, or Mongoloids. Strength change from 4 to 6. What? What? They're really good. Mongoloids are really good. They are really good. You don't see them played very much because the whole um, revealing thing was not too good for multiple rounds. But uh, th there may be more buffs. They said they are going to buff the revealing aspect. But 6 strength? I mean, I took Manticore's Venom because they were 4. And this was my. these were one of my Manticore Venom targets. Put 2 of those on the board, you can get rid of them both. Six? That's difficult now. That is two Owls or Thunders you need to do. Um, right, that's actually going to be quite dangerous. Because Manganels can easily win you a round. Uh, if, they, if they don't remove them. Spotters now receive plus one for each reveal card wherever they are. Spotters strength change from five to four. So they're a little weaker than seemingly uh, those have cast Smugglers. Which are five strength. But, uh, plus one for wherever they are. What does that mean? Because normally it's in either player's hand, isn't it? Revealed cards wherever they are. You don't think that means, like, cards which are on the board. That just seems silly. Ugh. Because I believe these spotters were retroactive anyway, weren't they? So you could place it down and then start revealing and they go up. Or you could reveal cards in the opponent's hand and then place it down and it would retroactively get all the strength that it was owed but if the opponent started playing those revealed cards it wouldn't count so I'm going to have to check that out as well but um, at the minute it doesn't seem like there's much change there apart from reduction of one strength but this one must mean something and it's probably something that I'm just missing Nautica Brigade now deals 5 damage that's the one that I believe uh, can hit spying units and you get you know higher strength which is good you can do a lot more to Cantarella but you need a couple of them Imperial Brigade now gets plus 3 strength instead of plus 2 for every spying unit. Oh, so uh, there you go. So it doesn't count the opponent's spying units, but uh, it gets plus 3 instead of plus 2. Swear's strength changed from 7 to 8. A little buff there. Van Himar's strength changed from 7 to 8. A little buff. Cynthia's Guardian strength changed from 8 to 6. Generally, that didn't matter too much. You'd normally try and rock toss her or something. Meadow Cohorn strength changed from 9 to 10. Darthysius Strength change from 9 to 11. Alright, a lot of people love that card. He doesn't seem too much play, but maybe he will. Morvrand Voorhees will not shuffle the deck after using his ability. Alright, so only a couple of changes. Basically, Manganels, uh, Spotters, and Imperial Brigades changed for revealing Nilfgaard. And a couple of gameplay bugs and fixes. Um, countdown continuing while well, in the graveyard. Regis not transforming. Yeah, we've seen that one. Rare issue using treason on a damaged Cantarella. The card will not be moved to the graveyard. Tibor Egg Branch <laughs> gains base value strength and reverts to seven once placed in the graveyard. Roach and Fogler is not coming back onto the board when locked. Great. 
um, because that's a lot more consistent. Because I think I read on the on the Discord that people were getting confused why when you lock Morkvarg and you lock Old Geared, why they weren't why they were coming back and Roach wasn't and Fog, you know. So it's good. Fix an issue with Pavetta destroying herself after using Elzors to cross. Oh, that's interesting. Nice synergy there. Clan Tursi Tursak Axeman receiving a massive amount of strength after Dimerotian Bomb. Yeah, so I believe I think that means Dimerotian Bomb doesn't count anymore. And the same for consuming effects, uh, consuming effects on the monster side won't buff the Axeman. Will only be triggered by opponent's units. Yeah, that was one thing that's changed. Fix an issue with Skellige faction ability not working on Morkvarg. Was it supposed to? I didn't think it was supposed to because he comes out before... Mm, maybe he's getting the old gear treatment, which would be very nice. A little extra buff for Morkvarg there. Fix an issue with Elias receiving points for Commando Neophytes, which were moved with Drowners or Geralt Ard. Oh, so it double, doubled up. That's crazy. Revealed ambush cards will now be affected by weather. Wasn't that always the case? I thought that always happened. It happened already, didn't it? That's weird. Don't understand that one. Must have happened. Morkvark should no longer receive random strength values after being affected by weather and resurrected. I remember that. <laughs> ah, good time with that one. <laughs> Harpies will no longer spawn eggs when pushed with Gold Ard. Yeah, fix an issue whereby uh, Kilak would be activated three, ti three times upon John Kelvit's ability. Yeah, because John Kelvit's ability only did a row, but then they changed it to... Like, it did the whole board, so it would actually do all three rows, which means it would activate three times, which was would have actually made him a lot more viable. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. But he is still good. He's interesting. But that's a nice fix. Fix an issue whereby Dimerity and Bomb would reset to units base strength regarding... Yes! Yes. I told you. So, Dimerity and Shackle, if a gold was in weather, it would demote them, set them to base strength, and then the weather would affect them down to one. If you use Dimerity and Bomb on a gold in weather, it would demote them. They'd go down to one. And then they would get set back to original strength. But now it worked properly like Dimension Shackle. Great. Game polishes. Jan Kelvitz tooltip fixed to mention non gold units. Added a one turn timer to the Lubikin's ability. So that's, yeah, that must be the same as Dennis Kramer. Just a visual thing to let you know something's happening every turn, which is great. Fix Skarl's ability to be lose two. Skarl is a very strange card now. Numerous tooltips. So that is the changes. I think there wasn't too much that I didn't agree with there. A lot of that was good. No Yennefer Conjurer. I don't know what I wanted it to do. I think a lot of people's ideas were uh, ties are resolved randomly. So there's two units, it'll hit one and not both, you know? Which means every turn it only gets a maximum of one value. Because some decks just, it's so oppressive for some decks, you know? It's just ridiculous. You have to pile a lot of strength into one unit and then Bork 3 Jackdaws comes out. I'm always talking about this, but I'm surprised we didn't get anything about Yennefer Kundra. She's going to still be great with this card. This deck probably hasn't changed, I would say. Not much, at least. Now, I understand, you know, it has changed. The Axemen have changed, which were the core part of the deck. But in actual terms, it might be easier to combat the Axemen, because any wounding you do to uh, the Skellige player won't buff the Axemen anymore. But, like... The Axeman would win by, like, absurdly large amounts. Now it's just been toned down, so I think they can still win nicely. So I think that particular faction, or that particular archetype, should still be around. A lot of people have teched for it, like I mentioned. So it's still probably not the most played because people have teched for it. And uh, Nilfgaard. I've got to test these Munganels and Spotters. I've really got to see what those are about. But, uh... The Munganels seem like they might come back in. I may, be, I may be wrong there, but six is a lot. The general issue with Nilfgaard and the revealing kind of archetype is that you win one round easily with the Munganels and then the other two rounds just kind of peter out. You haven't got the oomph to keep it on. You know, the pressure, the tempo. The tempo is what everyone says nowadays. I want to sound cool. Tempo. But uh, thank you for watching this uh, quick recap of the new hotfix. I was actually very surprised when I got home and saw it as happening. And I can't wait to test it out. So, I don't always play Gwent. But when I'm not playing Gwent, I'm about to start up Gwent. I'm waiting for the loading screen. <laughs> Thank you for watching, everyone. Take care, and I'll see you again very soon.